Tonight on Channel 6 News Weekend Edition, shots ring out outside of a Colleen nightclub. Who's responsible? Plus, traffic changes are coming to Temple. How it will affect your commute. And Central Texans giving back to those in need this holiday season. It's all happening on this Saturday, December 23rd, 2017. Channel 6 News Weekend Edition starts right now. Expect more. This is Channel 6 News Weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. Chris Rogers has the night off. We begin tonight in Waco where a man is dead after crashing his car into a tree. It happened in the, in the 9300 block of Chapel around 11 a.m. The male driver identified as Robert O'Frain was taken to Hillcrest Hospital after the crash where he later died. Witnesses said it appeared the man had some sort of physical problem before the accident. Police are now investigating. And after nine long months of work, TxDOT has finally completed the two bridges over I-35 and Central Temple. But how will that affect your commute? Channel 6 News reporter Andrew Moore is in studio with the details. Andrew. Imani, the two new bridges in Central Temple might seem like an early Christmas present, but the intersection is far from finished and there are a few changes you need to know about. So good news first, you can now take the southbound 301 exit, get on the access road and finally just turn left to get on Central Avenue. There is going to be an actual intersection there now and it's much faster. The bad news, if you need to get from Central Temple to South I-35, the ramp at that intersection has just been removed. Now you need to drive south on the access road all the way down to the shopping center to get on the highway. TxDOT told me today the bridges are a huge step forward for the area and the next steps will be to complete the turnarounds at the intersection and then demolish the old bridge. Right now, however, there is no timeline for those changes, so if you need to get on South I-35 from Central Temple, just give yourself a little bit of extra time. Imani? All right, thanks, Andrew. Well, it's time now for a first check of your weather. Meteorologist Bill Heckey is standing by with a look at our forecast. Hey, Bill. Hello, Imani, and it's not going to look a lot like Christmas. It's going to feel a whole oh, lot no. like Christmas. <laughs> I tried. I really worked it. I was watching all the low pressure areas thinking uh, we can kick one out of the uh, eastern Pacific and get some overrun on this cold air. Not so. We got the cold air and we've got more coming tomorrow, but we're not going to get that white Christmas. Temperatures are falling now. They're moving down through the mid and upper 30s and they're going to bottom around the freeze mark and we'll start tomorrow with that. But we've got a cold front coming in. It's going to give us some 35, 40 mile an hour winds. We'll have more details in just a little bit. Imani. All right, thanks, Bill. Now to Colleen, where a man is behind bars after shots were fired outside of a nightclub. Police say this happened just after 2 a.m. outside of Club Taboo. Officers say there was an altercation inside the club that spilled outside, and a short while later, gunshots rang out in the parking lot. One man was taken into custody. The good news, though, no injuries were reported. An investigation is underway. And in Waco, two men are on the run after robbing a convenience store at gunpoint. It happened at the Allen gas station on South 3rd Street and LaSalle Avenue. Police say the two men walked into the store, displayed a rifle and got away with some cash and cigarettes. The pair were wearing dark clothing and bandanas. They drove off in a silver sedan. Anyone with information is asked to contact Waco police. A man is in custody tonight after leading Salado police on a high speed chase. The incident happened in the 800 block of North Main Street in Salado earlier today. 38 year old Henry Abara was pulled over there for a traffic violation. Officers say when they asked the man to exit his vehicle, he drove off. He led police on a 15 minute high speed chase. That chase ended when the man's car gave out. Abara was taken into custody without incident. He's facing a charge of evading arrest with a motor vehicle and has several other charges pending. Well, in national news, a California man is under arrest for planning to bomb a San Francisco pier on Christmas Day. 26 year old Everett Jamison was taken into custody by the FBI following months of investigation. He's charged with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. According to reports, Jamison showed a lot of interest and support for terror attacks and named Pier 39 in San Francisco as a target location. The suspect's father says he's speechless. Really unbelievable. It's just hard to, to fathom right now. I, mean, I really don't know what to say, what, you know, how to feel. Really, it's just shocking. Convicted, Jamison could face a maximum of 20 years in prison, along with a $250,000 fine. 
Well, it's officially winter and for millions of Americans trying to get home for the holidays or trying to pick up those last minute Christmas gifts. There's no doubt about it. Snow, ice and below average temperatures are making things difficult across the country. NBC's Chris Pallone is in the middle of it all reporting for us from north of Boston tonight. It's early in the season, but even Santa isn't thrilled. A little foggy, it's a little messy, that's for sure. A winter wallop for millions two days before Christmas making a mess of last minute holiday shopping and travel. I'm extremely concerned about the heavy traffic and, you know, people not paying attention, getting distracted. From the Great Plains to Maine, it was snow. In southern New England, freezing rain. Driving nearly impossible at times in Massachusetts, difficult for even the most seasoned winter drivers. Was trying to get from New York City to northeastern Massachusetts for Christmas and uh, just got too icy. Once I got into Massachusetts, had to stop for the night about 40 miles short of where I was going. Going to try now, but it's still raining and below 32 degrees. And as you can see, everything is coated in a sheet of ice. It was slow going on the Mass Turnpike, but not too bad by Saturday afternoon. The nation's airports busy as expected. But analysts say of the 107 million people traveling in the next week, 97 million of them will be driving. The sled can handle better in this weather than the trucks. Less traffic up there. <laughs> For millions of Americans, along with their presence, winter has arrived. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Tewksbury, Massachusetts. For those hoping for a white Christmas, another snowstorm is likely from the Midwest to New England Sunday night into Christmas Day. A four year old girl who was cared for in the McLean Children's Hospital NICU returned to the hospital today to comfort other families. Jaylee McCollum was born weighing only one pound six ounces. She spent 15 weeks in the NICU before she was healthy enough to graduate. Now each year her family brings presents to other families on that same journey. Today, little Jaylee was able to hand out many of those gifts herself, giving other parents a glimpse of hope in their struggle. We saw how how they grew up and yeah. they're OK. And even if they do face some challenges, they got through them. And so that gives us hope for him because he's facing the same things that they did. So a year came around and she was home and had been home and was happy and healthy. And we decided to give back. Jaylee's family and friends helped out. This was the fourth year they've delivered those presents. Well, still ahead on Channel 6 News Weekend Edition, the Central Texas community gives back to families in need this holiday season. You won't want to miss it. And your forecast right after the break. Welcome back. A business in Colleen is giving back to the community by handing out hundreds of toys to local families. Brandon Martin has owned and run Crab Kings for two and a half years in the area. And he says the community has been so supportive of his stores that he wanted to do something in return. Today, Martin and other business owners gave out around 600 toys for kids of all ages. And for some local families, it'll make Christmas a whole lot easier. I'm a single mother, so this helped me out a lot with my kids, my nieces and my nephews. So, like I said, I'm really appreciative of it. You know, if you become successful, it's important to give back. Give back to the community, especially the community that uh, supports you. Martin says Crab King spent around $7,000 to make the event happen. Just two days before Christmas, people throughout Central Texas continue to spread holiday cheer. Today in Colleen, the Making Our Society Stronger Foundation partnered with the Boys and Girls Club to give back to families in need. Many of the kids who received items at the toy and coat drive were members of the Boys and Girls Club. Event organizers say it's important to give back not just during the holidays, but year round. My own personal mantra is to leave a legacy of leadership, stewardship, and mentorship uh, worthy of emulation. Uh, and realizing there's a need here in Colleen to give back and that there are so many in need, I felt it's incumbent upon myself and others to get involved and get active in the community. My kids now have new coats and toys and it's good for, for them. The Making Our Society Stronger Foundation focuses on academics, community service, and achievement for the youth. Well, today is the last Saturday before Christmas. I know it came out of nowhere, but it is traditionally one of the biggest shopping days of the year. And with the holiday falling on a Monday, it changes how we get those last minute gifts. CNBC's Courtney Reagan reports. 
If you haven't checked off your Christmas list yet, you are far from alone. I just started because I work all the time, so today's my first day of shopping. I'm not even close to being done. I'm stressed. None of it's done. We're just getting started, and I have two days to finish it. Half of U.S. consumers are expected to hit the stores in the final hours before Christmas. That's actually down from last year, largely because consumers took advantage of deals starting early in November. My holiday shopping has been pretty okay, except for those few hard last-minute people. <laughs> so here I am. Because when you come to the mall last minute, everything, the prices go up and, you know, you have to spend a lot more money. The last Saturday before Christmas is always critical, nicknamed Super Saturday. And it's even more important for last minute shoppers this year. With Christmas falling on a Monday, shipping deadlines were earlier, which means procrastinators need to finish up in stores. I started a week ago. Today is my second day um, continuing my shopping, and I think I'm going to... Uh, go tomorrow again. First data says holiday sales are up more than six and a half percent since November 1st. Couple an already strong season with the last minute rush and analysts are upping their optimistic forecasts going into the final shopping weekend. Today and tomorrow are key times for the holiday season and typically 40 percent of holiday sales occurs between December 15th and the 25th. So today, today and tomorrow are outliers in terms of their importance and significance. Uh, I think I need some adrenaline like last minute gives me some adrenaline and this is, this is what motivates me to, to do the shopping yeah nothing like the adrenaline of a ticking clock we are getting down to the wire this indeed is I, this is why i'm glad i got all my christmas shopping done earlier this week i just right. finished this morning that is, i was out this morning i was that person i, I know I and it was packed stressed trying it was to look, packed pull my everywhere hair out, yeah if i cut it that close but i'm done now so i can i can <laughs> join i can join the club now and look at everyone else who's still out there so yeah well curtis you're in for jessica with a look at sports midway making its second appearance in the state football championships tonight you know the panthers have one of if not the best offense in the state these year behind Oklahoma commit Tanner Mordecai. Could they get their first state title? Highlights are straight ahead. Welcome back. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Channel 6 News Weekend Edition. We hope you have a wonderful evening.